we're going to be looking at momentum and collisions. The principle of conservation of momentum states that for a closed system which has no external forces acting, then the total momentum is constant. That is, the total momentum before an event will equal the total momentum after. If we first consider two trolleys that are initially stationary and the plunger of one of the trolleys is released, what will happen next to conserve momentum? The trolleys will move off with equal and opposite velocities. Because initially the trolleys were stationary, then the initial momentum was zero. To conserve momentum then, the final momentum must be equal to zero. So our initial momentum is zero, and then this is the momentum for the two trolleys after the collision. And if we rearrange this equation, we can then see that the momentum of the first trolley must be equal and opposite to the momentum of the second trolley to conserve momentum. If we now consider two stationary trolleys, but one trolley has a larger mass than the other, what would happen next to conserve momentum when the plunger has been released from the first trolley? Well, the trolleys will move off in opposite directions, but the trolley with the larger mass would have a smaller velocity. So again, the initial momentum was zero because the trolleys were stationary, and so the final momentum must be zero. The momentum of the first trolley, of which has the smaller mass, will be m times v, and then the momentum of the trolley with the larger mass represented by big capital M times little v. So if we rearrange, you can see then the momentum of the first trolley will be equal and opposite to the momentum of the second trolley. But for them to have equal and opposite momenta, then the trolley with the smaller mass must have a larger velocity, and the trolley with the larger mass must have a smaller velocity. In any type of collision, momentum is conserved, and that's assuming that the collision is a closed system with no external forces acting. So if we consider two objects, A and B, which have initial velocities UA and UB before the collision, and then they collide with each other, and then after the collision they have velocities VA and VB. If we apply the principle of conservation of momentum, then the initial momentum of A plus the initial momentum of B will equal the final momentum of A plus the final momentum of B. So our total momentum is constant. If we rearrange this equation, we can show then that the impulse of A will be equal and opposite to the impulse of B. How we do that is we put all the A terms to one side to move that to this side and all the B terms to the other side. And if you remember an impulse is the same as a change in momentum. So you can see then the change in momentum of A is equal but opposite to the change in momentum of B. And if you remember our definition of impulse, it is equal to the force multiplied by the time the force acts. And so what we can say is the impulse of A will equal the force acting on A multiplied by the time it acts. And the impulse of B will equal the force acting on B multiplied by the time it acts. So in a collision between A and B, the time the forces act are the same for both of them. So we can cancel out the t's. So what this is showing you that in a collision, the forces that are acting on A and B are equal and opposite to each other. 
And this is consistent with Newton's third law of motion, which says that if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B will exert an equal and opposite force on object A. We'll now consider two types of collisions, elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. If you remember, we said that momentum is conserved in any type of collision as long as it's a closed system. So what does differentiate an elastic collision with an inelastic collision is whether kinetic energy is conserved. So K is conserved for an elastic collision, but not for an inelastic collision. There are very few real life examples of elastic collisions, but we can consider gas molecules as colliding elastically, and also snooker balls colliding elastically. There are many examples of inelastic collisions where kinetic energy is not conserved. An example would be car crashes, and this is because when the car cr comes together and crashes, the car changes shape, it deforms, and that requires energy. Another example would be when a bullet embeds itself into an object, that also requires energy, so kinetic energy would not be conserved. And another example would be when objects couple together, that is, they come together as one object. Again, that requires energy, and so kinetic energy would not be conserved. So in order to know whether a collision is elastic or inelastic, then what you would need to do is to calculate to see whether kinetic energy is conserved. Will the total kinetic energy before the collision equal the total kinetic energy after the collision? So if we consider elastic collision between two objects, A and B, and apply conservation of momentum, so the total momentum before the collision will equal the total momentum after the collision. Next, we'll rearrange the equation to get the A terms on one side of the equation and the B terms on the other side of the equation. We'll now consider conservation of kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy before the collision will equal the total kinetic energy after the collision. Half is common throughout, so we can cancel it. And again, we'll rearrange the equation to put the A terms on one side and the B terms on the other. And it gives us this. If we factorise u squared minus b squared, that will give us u plus b times by u minus b. So we'll factorise both sides of the equation to give us this. And we'll call that equation 2. If we then divide equation 2 with equation 1, which gives us this. So on the left hand side, we have the A terms of equation 2 divided by the A terms of equation 1. On the right hand side, we have the B terms of equation 2 divided by the B terms of equation 1. MA times UA minus VA is common on the top and the bottom, so cancel out. And also MB multiplied by VB minus UB is common on the top and the bottom, so cancel out. So what that leaves us with is UA plus VA will equal UB plus VB in a for an elastic collision. So the total velocities of A will equal the total velocities of B. If we consider the elastic collision of ball A moving at velocity V towards stationary ball B, um, both A and B have the same mass. But after they collide together, ball A will become stationary and ball B will move off with the same velocity V that A had initially. So considering the equation for velocities, we can see that UA equals V, UB equals zero, because the ball was stationary, VA 
equals zero. And so UA must equal BB and so equal V. We can see in this case that momentum has been conserved. Our initial momentum was MV and our final momentum is MV. And we can also see that kinetic energy is conserved. Our initial kinetic energy is a half MV squared and our final kinetic energy is a half MV squared. If we now consider the elastic collision between an incoming ball which has a much larger mass than the stationary ball B, what will happen after these two balls collide? They both move off in the same direction but ball B will move off with a much larger velocity than the initial velocity that ball A had. If we consider the equation for velocities, then UA equals B, UB equals zero. So we can then say V, which is our UA, plus VA equals VB. So that means the velocity of B must be greater than V. And also, it must be greater than the, velocity, the final velocity of A. As momentum is conserved, then ball A will have an equal and opposite impulse to that of ball B. And so the change momentum of A will be equal and opposite to the change momentum of ball B. As they have the same magnitudes of impulses, then the change in velocity of B will be greater but in the opposite direction to the change in velocity of A. The object with the larger mass will have a smaller change in velocity and so the object with the smaller mass will have a larger change in velocity to have the same magnitude of impulse. Ball B has gained momentum so it is getting an increase in velocity so that means ball A will lose momentum so it's going to get a decrease in velocity. So we know some of the initial kinetic energy of A will then have to transfer to B as it has gained some momentum. So the velocity of A after the collision will be less than its initial velocity V. We'll now consider this third elastic collision where you have an incoming ball approaching a stationary ball and the incoming ball its mass is less than the stationary ball. What will happen after the collision? The balls will move off in opposite directions with ball B having a velocity which is less than the initial velocity V of ball A. So if we look at the equation for velocities, we can say that UA will equal V, UB will equal zero. So that means V plus VA will equal VB. As velocity A has after the collision is now in the opposite direction, so VA is now negative then VB must be less than V. We know also that the balls will have equal and opposite impulses, so the change in momentum of A will be equal and opposite to the change in momentum of B. As A has the smaller mass, it will have a larger change in velocity than B but in the opposite direction. For A to get a larger change of velocity, it needs to bounce back. So that's why VA is negative. As ball B has gained momentum, then ball A has to lose momentum in order for the total momentum to be constant. And so some of the kinetic energy of A is transferred to B. So after the collision, 
ball A has lost some kinetic energy and has lost some momentum. So the magnitude of its velocity must be less than V. We'll now consider fourth elastic collision where you have a chain of colliding objects all with the same mass. So the first ball has a velocity V. What will happen at the end after they've all collided together? Well, the final ball in the row will move off with that velocity V. And this is because to conserve momentum and to conserve kinetic energy. Let's now consider a collision where we've got our row of objects and the first two balls are moving with a velocity v towards the chain of stationary balls. Would it be then possible for the final ball to move off with a velocity 2v? Well, yes, if we consider conservation of momentum, then we've got our initial mass of 2m times velocity v and then final momentum will equal our initial mass of m times velocity 2v so yes momentum is conserved so now let's consider conservation of kinetic energy and our initial kinetic energy will equal a half times the mass which is 2m times velocity squared so that equals mv squared our final kinetic energy will equal a half times the mass m times 2v all squared 2v all squared is 4v squared so that will equal then final ke of 2mv squared so we've actually gained kinetic energy which is not possible and so this collision, this scenario is not possible. What is possible then is for the last two balls to move off with velocity v so that momentum is conserved and also kinetic energy is conserved.